vast swamps and wilderness areas of the state of Florida are home to a legend. Join Team Crypto Reality as they go after the truth. Go! For the first time in Bigfoot research history, you're going to see what it takes to be a real Bigfoot researcher. Real story from behind the scenes. Bigfoot Researchers Journal. We got a great show for you. We had uh, an encounter on this past Saturday with multiple Sasquatch. Um, saw him through the thermal. Uh, Scott had the uh, the Thor thermal that shoots in uh, in black and white with the black heat signature register. Uh, caught a, caught some movement on film and at the time of the sighting, confirming uh, what I was seeing. Uh, 20 feet away, man. No mistaking what was going on. Um, here, check it out. You don't hear stuff. I'm right with you. Where's he at? Right there. See him? Uh-uh. Scott, right in front of you, man. I see it. Jesus Christ, there's another one. Okay. Uh, I got three or four. Okay, it's time to back up. Everybody, down the trail. Scott, they're paralleling us. I know it. Scott, they're following us. I know it. Scott, are you with me? I'm with you. Yeah. Mark, you're going to have to check your britches when you I get think back so, because, dude, I almost had a heart attack when he... I looked over, and I said, oh, God, there's something there. And then all of a sudden, it leaned to the left to look around the bush. And it was st I was staring at it right through the thermal as it did it, and it was like, like this. And th then I saw it move a lot, and then I saw the other two heads. I was like, what? How many feet do you think that was? 20? Yeah, if, yeah, if it's what I was thinking it was, it was 20 feet. 20 feet, man. From three of them. Next morning we headed back in to the area and uh, and it was beautiful. Check this otter out. He's uh, he's hanging out in that ditch. We got his attention. Let's see if I can get this focus to clear up a little bit here. There we go. Beautiful specimen. Curious, as they are. Over the course of the last uh, four and a half years or so, I've noticed that in this particular area, you will rarely see a squirrel in a tree closer than 20 feet to the ground, which I think is strange. Normally, 
the squirrels in almost every other place that we go come down the tree and get on the ground. But not here. They avoid the ground in this spot. And I know why. And there's the track right next to Melanie. That's the left foot. Take the step to the next track now. That's the next track. Right here. Right here. Right here. Look at that. Guys, that's a 50 plus inch step length. And the next track is 50 inches up. Right here. Right here. And then there's the next one. And then right here, there's a nice gouge where the toes hit. Look at that one. Smell it? Holy I mackerel. Smell them. What do you got, Mel? I got um, Bigfoot smell to the left. Yeah, we got uh, we got tracks and it's a juvenile with a 50 inch step length, man. Holy cow. We're tracking this dude. Oh man, that smell is strong, man. It's a good, he left a good trail, man. We just had a lot of rain. It's amazing. It's amazing. This trackway goes all the way in. It's right here. It's a human foot. Human foot. With a 50 inch step length. There's another one right there. God, man. Right here? Dude, every single one of them, here? 50 inches. Right here? Right Keep here? Keep going, Mel. Right next to the tracks. Look at this guy. Go ahead, Mel. I don't see the next one. Right here. Well, we got some dense, you know, and some ground brush there, but... This is crazy, man. There's toe imprints right there. Looks like this person was hopping and right here. running and walking. Yeah, let's take a look at those. Toes. Toes right here. Yep. Let's keep track of them. Look, look, look. It's opening up into sand tracks. Wow. This joker was putting out some dirt, man, kicking rooster tails. That is one hell of a step length. Look at this. Look at this. Look at these tracks. 
Look at that step length, guys. And it's one in front of the other, dude. Look. Dude. See that? Yes. Compliant gate. No stagger all the way down that trackway. That's amazing. No stagger, man. Tight rope walking. They haven't given us this on the other side. It's clear and blatant. Look at this trackway goes all the way through here through this mud. This There's is another amazing. one down there. Wow. Look at this, man. Compliant gate. Holy mackerel. This is like really killer. One in front of the other. You can see these tracks are one in front of each other. Like they're walking on a tightrope and they're 50 to... Dude, these might be 70 inches apart. These tracks are... They're six and a half feet apart, at least. I mean, this is like... Chronic, man. Look at that. Look at that track. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, move on with the, the actual plan today. We stopped in the spot where we caught them on film on the other side there, and uh, I want you to roll, or be ready to roll, with the iPad as we're going down there because I'm hearing something on the other side of the trail, and I think they're following us in. So if it ends up being that little gray guy with the nasty attitude, I definitely wanna get footage of him if we can, all right? Mm -hmm. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and move in to our uh, to our our spot to film where we usually shoot. Again, you, you know when you're being followed, and because we've done this so many times with them in the exact same spot, we pretty much know which ones it's gonna be. And uh, it looks like this is one of the little juveniles, the gray-faced one. I don't know if it's the one that has an attitude, but it was definitely one of them. Now for a little explanation of what's going on here, there's a bank right there that runs down into the water. He's on the grade on the slope and he's poking his head up on top of the hill so his body it possibly half of it's in the water uh, we just, I just had a big old whiff come through the window here probably actually back that way we got very little wind today so it'll be more difficult to actually pick up on them I like it when it's a little windy because then we get uh, I don't know what I don't know man that smelled like one back there and we've caught them out here before we had one run next to the car if you guys remember and it was, you know, it was kind of a blurry shot, but you could see this hairy big old dude like ducking and running. Now, it's not that we're not allowed to be in here. We are, but we're not trying to give away their position so that they can suddenly vanish, so. So guys, here we are being trailed by a Sasquatch. We're gonna watch this a few times and you can see him. It's real blurry, but you can see him. He's running about 25 miles an hour on the other side of the bushes keep it up with us watch this boom you can see him duck come from behind the tree back and forth here we can see he's ducking and he's running let's watch it again you can see him dart across that hole just a black figure and that's because you know obviously we're moving real quick but this guy is booking in the prairie in the mud on the other side of those thick bushes look at that boom boom 
can see him plain as day, ducking, boom, and he takes off. They're following us on the way in, on the road now. Keep in mind, all this was going on as the chopper was flying around out here. I filtered everything out, and you can see the forehead and the nose. It was the only frame I could get. He was moving so fast, it was just a blur. We gotta be very careful today. Hopefully that thing doesn't come back. A couple times it was flying over the one day, it flew right over us. It was hanging out, following us out, all this stuff. It's like, you know, so we gotta be careful. And they run so fast that they can stay ahead of you if you're driving slow. But uh, anyway, we're trying to establish our predictability. We'll put it that way. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to the Bigfoot Researcher's Journal. You're looking at that hair sample that one of our team members pulled from a barbed wire fence here in South Florida bordering a swamp. Now here in South Florida, we know for a fact that there are no species that are known or accepted to science that actually have clear hair. The only thing on planet Earth that has clear hair is a polar bear. So man? There's a nice sample of polar bear hair right there. You can see it's crystal clear. Same kind of hair as our sample. And as we know, Polar bears do not live in the swamps of South Florida. That's ridiculous. Man, you can have this heat. See ya. So what animal does that hair come from that we found snagged on that barbed wire fence? That is the question, isn't it? Well, since we already know that polar bears are the only species on the planet that actually have crystal clear hairs, my hair's clear, bitch! and they don't live in the swamps of South Florida, it's hot! We have to deduct from logical reasoning that there's something else, something out here in the swamps in South Florida that has hair just like a polar bear. Why you all up on me, dog? Because it really is, if you use logic, crystal clear. But let's learn a little bit about what having clear hair is actually like and it is cool did you know polar bears can actually turn green it's a condition that results from them rolling around on the concrete in their enclosures small pieces of algae can get caught in their hairs and then start to grow over time the polar bear begins to turn green curiously some of the hairs in the sample that we found here in south florida actually have algae growing on them as well. And if the polar bears, when they have algae growing on their hairs, turn green, and the sample we found here in South Florida has algae growing on it, turning it green, then logically, it's safe to say whatever this hair belongs to probably looks green. And since polar bears are extremely large carnivorous mammals, it stands to reason that the sample we pulled here in South Florida from that barbed wire fence in the swamp could be from a large carnivore that is able to hide because it appears to be the same color as the forest. From both its clear hair blending in and the algae growth all over its body. Aren't these guys supposed to be white? Polar bear hair literally adopts the coloration of the light that shines upon it. Like this guy, enjoying a late afternoon walk in the orange afternoon sunlight. I'm orange right now. It happens sometimes. So in the afternoon sunlight, they can appear to have an orange tone to their hair. Or like this poor guy, with algae growing all over him, they can look green. Now whatever it is that's out here in the swamps of South Florida, that has this clear hair, would surely have the same ability to change color like a polar bear. See, this color changing business is all about the hair, not the species that wears it. Sir, are you trying to tell me there's a giant hairy green monster running around the forest? 
So literally, if we were to put clear hair on a squirrel, super squirrel, and that squirrel was in a forest, he would all but vanish into the environment. <laughs> whatever this thing is leaving this hair, it can blend in perfectly in whatever environment it's in. Take a long, hard look at what's in the center of this shot. This comes from a video, one of our research videos. This is an area that we regularly encounter Sasquatch. Do you see how it appears that there's just a tree there? Well, if you really look closer, you'll see that there's a huge face at the bottom of that tree. That's a Sasquatch. That's the clear hair and the achromatic coloration of their skin working its magic on your perception. But how far can we take this clear hair blending in thing? Check this out. Here's our hair sample that was pulled off the barbed wire fence in the swamp in front of a polka dotted pattern. As you can plainly see, the hair now appears to be polka dotted. Let's take a look at that shot in the forest once again. If something with that clear hair was standing in front of, say, four cypress trees that are colored gray, it would blend in. Remember? It even blends in with polka dots. As you know, trees don't typically grow faces. And to show you that this is actually what we're saying it is, here's a picture of the same exact trees a few minutes later. See? No face. But in the video taken a few minutes earlier, there appears to be a huge face with a big head, gray colored, it even has some green tones. You can even see a little shoulder behind the side of that other little tree on the right. Do you know what that looks like? That looks like what eyewitnesses have been describing for as long as people have walked the North American continent. It looks like a Sasquatch, a gray Sasquatch. You know what though? Let's just go ahead and outline him so you can really see what's there. So what do we have here? If we look in this area, you can see this line right here, right? Let's see what that is. Let's, let's see if we can do a little drawing on that or something. Let's see if we can outline it for you. Here you go. This is part of the shoulder. And you can see there's a tree right here. But then you can see this individual's head actually right in here. And it goes behind that other one. And what do we have? We've got the outline of a head. And then right in here, you can literally see the nose, the area of the mouth, and in the, in the eyes. Is it possible that all these people who say they've seen these things are telling the truth? Is it possible that at least in some cases, mainstream scientists, biologists in particular, are finding evidence that there's something else out there. The tracks, even the hair samples, like the one we've examined today, and they're simply ignoring it. I would be willing to bet that to avoid becoming that guy, a biologist would do just about anything to ignore the physical evidence, the trace evidence, and the anecdotal evidence that conclusively shows that wild relic hominoids still walk the earth. Hmm. All right, I was, uh, I was, I was probably a mile in, maybe a little less, and, uh, I could hear the cows. Cows were off to the distance and they were mooing and they were making, actually they, they were making their way towards me because I was on a narrow creek bed that's dry right now. So it's more like a pasture with tall grass. And uh, so a pack was coming by me and uh, 
all of a sudden I heard a loud uh, tree snap and all of a sudden the cows started running and I heard them they were getting closer and closer the moves were getting closer and their stampede the sound of it was just getting closer it was like I could feel it in the earth so there was a path on the right side a path on my left side so it's kind of thick back there but there was a tall pine tree right behind me with some palmettos around it so I just jumped over and I tucked in behind it like this and 10 seconds later 10 seconds later cows are rushing by me on both sides just just boogie just getting it going just moving and they they flew by me and got up a little bit past and made their way through the brush got into the creek bed into the pasture kind of and then I then I heard another uh, herd of cows to my right and were starting to move and the ones over here that just passed me were moving back so they were letting them know you know they were okay where are they where are you at where are you at you know and he was he was calling he was talking back to the female that was moving to him finally they start coming across and in between two of the moves I heard uh just uh it was it was out of the, the sound of the moves there was moves moves and there was like a ah in the middle of it and I was like okay and it was back off a couple hundred yards a hundred yards or so probably a little less off my left and there was tall a tall forest back there pine trees thick and all with pine trees and uh i know what i heard and that's when i just said okay once these cows pass me i got on my google maps and i looked where the dirt road was instead of tracking all the way back where i came from i crossed a uh, kind of a field that has growth in it <laughs> you were just trying to get and out I of just it. back to the dirt road because it's open on there and i was back in the opening and i didn't feel you know subjected to whatever could have happened <laughs> to harm or get my head ripped off so I said, all right, I'm out here, and I followed, and I walked the dirt road back down to my truck. And that's the same spot the rock was thrown at me, you know, a week later. After I found that hair, walking back, the rock was thrown at me. So, we're, uh, <laughs> we're in a hot spot. That's for sure. You see that? I've seen that through a thermal. And really, it's probably close to the actual size of the thing's head compared to mine. Uh, it may have even been larger. Um, the individual I saw through the thermal uh, was looked just like this. Um, maybe his, uh, his brow ridge was a little bulgier, but this is really close, you know what I mean? This is basically what we're dealing with in these situations when we're in the field. This is what's out there. Um, you, you can you can listen to what we're saying or you can choose to ignore it. I, I can tell you this. If you make the mistake of setting foot in the wrong area um, and these guys are in there, <laughs> you're going to see something similar to this. All right, first let's take a look at last week's footage of that little guy hopping. You can see the left-hand corner. I've highlighted it. It's up there. This is real speed. I'm going to zoom in now. And this is actual speed. Real time. Now, you can't even see the hop. It's so fast. You have to really look to, to see it. This is how they're able to move. If they want to, they can turn on an explosive speed instantaneously. This thing goes from standing still into that hop and lands, that's that's real actual speed of the film. If we were to measure how fast that eight or nine foot jump was, I'm quite sure it would be something ridiculous that we would consider to be unnatural, though it's perfectly natural with the musculatures of these creatures. So we've caught this kind of thing on film before. Um, this is one of our primary spots, the creek bed. There's a group of them here. And uh, as we pulled in on this particular day, um, I looked to my left as I was pulling in the car, and I saw an upright figure moving between the trees. Keep in mind that if you can see into that tree line, you're seeing above the six-foot high mark. There's a depression in there. It's a creek bed. If you can see something in there, it's big. So anyway, I, I keep searching here in real time. Eventually, I see this thing. I see it. It ducks. And it throws something up in a tree. Right? Ducking. 
and it throws some of them to tree. If you watch closely when it ducks, you can plainly see this figure. Again, the reason we can see that thing above the foreground ground brush is it's gigantic. It's it's huge. And and you see the duck and then it throws something up in the tree, right? Now pay attention to that duck. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. The speed. Look at how fast. Again, if you can see that, and you can, it's huge. And so, how does this compare to the speed and the actual ducking movement of the other footage? Let's take a look. It's ridiculous. It's, it's the same type of speed. And really, this kind of movement represents an ability to process information much faster than I think you know we're capable of. So we're seeing something that has a, you know a, a, a 12 cylinder brain that's processing information much faster, enabling it to engage in these high speeds and accomplish these fluid motions. Um, this is something that's very common in gibbons. Uh, gibbons are thinking five steps ahead and they're able to process that information. Uh, if you watch some videos on gibbons, you're going to be freaked out at the, the movements they're capable of. This is very similar. I mean, this thing is fast. There's, there's no getting around it. That's 50% uh, speed and it's still quick. Look at this. There's that duck. There's that duck. Same thing as this. I think we've got the same species here, miles apart. And um, and this is a really big one in a creek bed. Keep in mind, again, if you can see that individual and he's well above the foreground, he's enormous. That thing's at least 12 to 15 feet in the background of that tree in the foreground. It's huge. That brush at the bottom of your frame, that's right around six feet, the tops of those. This is a big thing back there. So again, while, you know, this is extreme similarity in speed, it also points to an ability to process information much faster than what we can do. Um, this thing is, it, it, it's essentially walking around waiting to fire when it needs to and when they fire because they need to kill something you, you can believe that it's going to be fast and violent this is just a little guy look at this speed and agility comes up jumps down up jump down up, jump, down, up, jump, down, up, jump, down. Think about the speed of that. Up, jump, down, up, jump, down. That thing's brain is working. Up, jump, down, up, jump, down. Think about the decision making in the wilderness, that the, the rate you would have to be processing in order to, to do this. All right, so uh, here's the view from our game camera. The one Brian set up in the area we get the hair samples, and um, and it's you know typical cow pasture kind of area. Uh, we finally managed to capture something. Uh, we're having problems with the game camera, and uh, we'll get into that and what may be causing the problems with the with this game camera. But uh, but first, let's check out the uh, the image. Somehow the camera stopped shooting video and only got an image of this little guy outside the bushes peeling trying to get back in it's like uh he's either landing or uh or cutting back you can see the right leg there uh it's it's just fascinating they're, they're so incredible and again this is you know where we're catching the big ones on film great shot It's no surprise to me that we're catching these uh, these smaller ones on film. Um, 
we catch smaller ones on film more than we catch the big ones on film. I think the smaller ones are a little more curious, a little more inexperienced, and they just seem to be easier to capture on film. Obviously, it's rare to see one outside of the bush here in the state of Florida. Put your hand in there, B. Holy mackerel, that's a huge track, dude. I mean, look at a big toe compared Put to your foot. forearm on there. Jeez. Dude, it's almost as long as your whole forearm. Yeah. And look at the, the ridge line of the heel where it flattened out on the earth. You can see the whole heel. Right oh, yeah. Here. And then the squish. Like well, dude, the toes right are enormous, man. Yeah. That's a big foot track, guys. So I always talk about how... When you increase your awareness and you're in the areas that you're researching or even if you're just in the wilderness, you hear things all the time, right? And, and typically they're not associated with a 700-pound hominoid. It, it could just be some bushes rustling, right? But they don't always move like you're 700 pounds. And when you know you're in an area that they're in, they like to be sneaky. They like to be on top of uh, seeing everything that goes on in the area. So... Whenever I hear something, I try to set the camera up. Mel and I have been doing this for five years, man. Set the camera up, point in the direction of, uh, of what's going on, and give a little segment and shoot behind you. This time it paid off.
What's going on guys? We're here in the editor. We're taking a look at a piece of film that uh, is one of the best that we've had to date. Uh, we're going to move it along here and boom, without further ado, right? Uh, you can see these individuals in here uh, moving around, right? We got, you know, the, the scuba mask, uh, you know, oculus bone structure here. And, uh, and, and it just leads right into a great shot of a Bigfoot. And, uh, and really, I mean, a great shot. Uh, what are we looking at? Okay, well, this little V right here is the top of this guy's forehead. And it's almost as if, uh, you know, he's got his hair back a little bit there, pulled back on his head. But you can see where the brow actually is rounded and goes back. And then there's hair hanging off his head. As if this is almost a Native American Mohawk style hairdo on this guy. I mean, it's incredible. You can see the side of this guy's head. This is his forehead right here, man. You got the brow ridge, the forehead, the brow ridge, the eyes are right under it, and there's a real wide nose, and this guy's lips are pursed. He's even got a beard. Look at this face. Forehead, eyes, nose, upper lip, mouth, little under lip area here, the cheek. He's got the green aberration shining down right here. All right, so... Uh... All right, so here, here he is, right? And uh, and if you're looking at this, this is basically what's there. Um, you know, the primitiveness of the individual in, in reality is not conveyed in this picture by any means. Trust me. They're very primitive looking. And when you see one, you know you're looking at something that's like, whoa. This is like something from the past or something, man. I mean, you, you can see it. It, it's all over every aspect of their bone structure. Really interesting creature. 45 feet from my wife. Waiting on an apple. Or something else. Look at this. Watch this, guys. This guy smells my wife. How about that, man? Check this out. Smell my wife. Dude, really, bro? I mean, that's pretty cool. You can see this guy's nostrils when they flare up. One, two. And there's a little bit of eye shine right in there, man. And it comes back down. In between frames, he's smelling the air. Melanie's about 70 yards away. Uh, afterwards, he vanishes back in. You can see his mouth right here, his nose and nostrils. He comes out, takes a look real quick, and then pulls back in. There appears to be uh, a possibility of other subjects around him. We're not going to get into that. Uh, it only causes issues. So we know we've got one right here, and uh, and I think it's actually one incredible shot. And apparently, smell my wife. Nice. There he is, guys. Sasquatch Alazask. Have a good night. Yeah, this is nice here, look. He's smelling my wife. The nostrils flaring up. The eye shine.
Alrighty guys, so just checking the volume there. We've got some really interesting stuff going on in the tree line here. I'm going to show you what I'm dealing with, and this is how I've been reviewing the research um, on a weekly basis from the beginning. As we get better equipment, we get better footage, that means I can review better details. Right now I'm shooting at 60 frames per, uh, per second. That's 60 uh, FPS. And I'm using an Osmo with this. This camera is supported by a gimbal. And there's just so much movement. There's there's little ones and big ones moving all through this footage. Look at this, guys. Watch up watch up in this area, this area, this area. And then there's two, it appears. One's going down and one's coming up. And it's it's like they're up and down. Watch this. Right in here and right in here. Watch this. Ooh, 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 ooh. What do we got going on here? Watch this. You, 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 you. Let me throw a little light on that for you. Uh, let me let me separate this part of the clip. And right here, I will put a little spot for us. And we'll take a look, man. We'll see what's going on. Yeah. But um, you know, I mean, just looking at. The clip itself and everything that I've seen, it appears that there are some very serious individuals in this tree line, and quite a few of them. Um, I'm letting that render, but we're we're just just looking at it. You can see this movement is phenomenal, man. There's guys ducking. One guy's coming up right here, and you can kind of see where his little eyes are, and he's got the pointy head. This is a little Sasquatch, man. Here's a miniature. And then right behind him, see, this is the head, right? Right behind him, you can see the eyes and then, you know, some structure back in here. You got some palm fronds shining, and there's somebody right here. I mean, it's amazing footage, man. Look at this. He comes up, and the other guy goes down. It's crazy. Right in here, there's a smaller one, and it's it's kind of back in there, too. And, and you can see this thing. Its head is right here. Now, what I'm going to do is adjust a little bit of the exposure on this. Let's see if we can bring some of these details to life in that background. Now, we're going to watch and we're going to see. I know I got one here. I can see his two little eyes. One here and one here. And, you know, he's just behind this little leaf here. We got a little juvie. And, uh, and he's out there getting in trouble. And then there's a little guy right here. Watch this. I don't know if that made it worse or better. I think that actually made it worse. But you can see a little more. And there's some movement over here, too. There's some interesting stuff. Watch between these two trees right here as I, as I shift frames. Look at this. Look at this movement. We got something going down and something coming up in that part of it. Just in that one section. It's an individual in between those trees watching us, and he's coming up as I move. But we've also got movement right here. So what does this tell me? From a research standpoint, guys, look at this. It looks like bobbleheads coming up. One, two, three. They're all over the place, guys. Look at this. Snaking through here, and these things are just moving everywhere. You got the little brothers right there, little glowing eyes. Listen, this is, uh, this is the kind of stuff that... You know, I look at it and I get blown away sometimes because I'm like, I mean, you can look at this, right? Watch this area right here, guys. Watch this. Look at that movement right in there. Look at this huge bulge right here in the bushes suddenly moving. You can see this. Watch right here, right here. And this is moving this way. And what else is going on? What else is going on is this. Watch this, guys. Yep. What's this? Here, I'm going to let it play. Zip. All of a sudden, he comes in. Rewind it. Play it again. Rewind it. Play it again. There's somebody, and he's zipping through this tree line. As all this is happening, and all that stuff I just showed you, this guy's a little further to the right, and he's moving towards that group that's all ducking that I just showed you. He's in the tree line. Look at him. Look at how smooth. Whoosh, right at the tree. Whoosh, right there. 
That's the individual's face. Now, yeah, it's blurry, man, but look, we're establishing something right now that's going to pay off at the end of this research video. Look at that movement. Boom, he snaps right in next to the tree in real time. Now, this is this is 1% speed in real time. This guy's a blur in the tree line. He literally zips behind those three trees and appears right here. I mean, it's unbelievable the speed of this guy. Just boom, and he's there. Watch this. Boom. We're gonna we're gonna show it again. That's him. He just came from over here to over here. But he's traveled 35 feet in the tree line. Look at this. Look at this movie. Watch this spot. Here's a spot. It's over there. This is it in real time. It's how fast he does it. That's real time. He's right there. He's right there. He's right there. He's right there. You're going to be able to see it as he arcs in the hop, right in the middle. The color changes as he passes through right there. Now he lands. Boom. There he is. This dude is traveling through this tree line. You can see where he landed. He's right here. Now it's dark and he's, he's coming through and he lands. You'll see it darken right here. Watch. Boom. He's coming through. Boom. He lands. Spot. Dark. Right here. Beginning. Arc. Landing. Beginning. Arc. Landing. Beginning. Arc. Landing. This dude's traveled like 30 feet in, I don't know, two, three hops. I mean, this guy's traveling some distance, man. I've been back in there. I know this place like the back of my hand. I've even filmed in 3D in there. Okay? What this guy's doing is incredible. Absolutely incredible. But watch all this because what happens is, is right here where he lands, he's going to set up. Look at that. That's real time right there. Look at that. Right here and right here. That's how fast that individual is going through that tree line. Folks, you have no idea what's going on in the bushes around you. Trust me. Uh, the hairy flash has got it all under control. Trust me. This is a, probably a more natural tone of what's in there. Um, you can see him hop. Watch. There he is here. This is some of the symmetry, some of the, the actual parts. You can see movement. There's a lot of stuff going on. And now we're he's in this area. And he's, and he's setting up to take a look at me. Now, he's traveled. There's actually another one right in here. You can see some color. He's over here. But but there's a bunch of them. We saw this is the same section of trees they were ducking in. Right in here. All through this back area. They're peeking. In those ducking guys. But this dude right here, this is who we want to watch. We're going to start seeing his eyes up here and his nose. There's his eyes. And you can literally see that nocturnal retina that light reflecting eyeball you can see him right there oh we're gonna stop that man we got to we got to review that a little bit better okay right there so i want to go over this this is something that i'm seeing now i'm seeing what appear to be some uh some ear formations on these guys these, this is a seven-foot individual right here. This is a six-foot line right here, folks. This dude's in a creek bed, but he's up close to the edge of this. And and I'd say that puts him, uh, you know, probably right around six and a half, seven feet is what I'm guessing. There is an incline right there, but he's probably only a foot or so down the incline if he's right up on the palmettos in this area, right? So he's on the edge of them. But I'm, I'm, I'm having difficulty with this uh, with this head here this resembles what i caught in the tree line uh in the other video like a week ago but this is on the ground now and uh and this creature is a part of what we're filming here and uh, and to me it's disturbing now this is what it actually looked like let's just stop that here it is this is natural and you're gonna see this thing here it is right here you're gonna see it oh yeah okay this looks like a, a, this is stick, right? We know this is stick. But coming in here, you got this dude, and it just looks like a part of some of the branches, right? Look, here's a branch coming down, and then is this, he just looks like he's a part of the branch. But if you turn the lights on, and you get in there, 
what you see is big bulging eyes and some weird, you know, this is a weird creature. And, uh, and we're catching it in several different positions here, man. Uh, doing the film review, we're going to see some really interesting stuff with this guy. Uh, you know, in the end of this, and uh, and I'm gonna, you know, the footage of the breakdown here is incredible. I mean, you're staring at this thing. You got both eyes. Here's the uh, the light reflecting nocturnal stuff going on in the eyes there. Here's you know the the base of the nose, the underside, and then you can see right here's the little ball on the, on the bridge going up. And you've got your brow ridges, and and you've got some stick coming through, and you can see that right there. And it just continues, right? It's on the exact angle at the back of the tree that's stick right so that stick is in front of his head he's behind that stick right and it's it's interesting but there is something next to him let's take a look at that that is just an awesome shot too man it's a great shot i'm you know i mean i i saw the blur of these creatures moving in that part of in that section of the tree line i didn't actually see this guy run up like he did, and he did run. He he ran up and zipped behind a tree, and he jumped and hopped twice, and he traveled a considerable distance, 30, 40 feet, something like that. But you can see this face, you know, and uh, and he's just watching. He's just watching. There he is, you know, looking back and forth on it. You can see him. He's in there watching, and uh, and you know, it's it's really it's fascinating, you know. Let me put a crop on this. Let's take a look a little bit, a little bit closer. There it is. Okay, and you can see, now you can see the bone structure, right? This is cheek. This is that, that or the bottom side of that orbit would be, you know, the cheekbone. And, and you've got the heavy brow and the real deep set eyes right here. This is the underside of the nose. This creature is built for the swamps, man. Upper lip would be in this area and in the mouth somewhere right in here. Uh, you know, we've been shooting this creature uh, in this tree line to the extent that I have literally painted this creature. I believe this is this is it. This is the one, you know. I saw this thing on, on another day. This exact one. And uh, and so anyway, let's take a look at this little guy that's going to be pushing his way in. You got the head right here. And this is going to be the brow, right? And uh, and what you're going to do is you're going to you're going to be able to see this guy really well. I mean, this is cool. Look at you can even see there's some eye. There's a little eye shine coming off of that. Now, this other guy's down here, and there's a stick and some other weird stuff coming through here. But you can see this monkey's got perfect little monkey face. Let's make an adjustment on uh, on the contrast and bring some of that light out of it. And let's see if we can get it to where. Yeah, it's a little. You can see you got the the primate, uh, non-human primate bone structure with that long upper lip. That relic hominoid kind of stuff that you know that old country stuff man and uh, and the che exaggerated cheekbone it looks like you got a little eyebrow going here and possibly another one on that side you know so so we go back at times and we have to reevaluate some of the stuff that we see earlier we thought some of this was stick coming through and it may be still he could be behind it like like we adjusted before, it could be you know some kind of a knot, and it looks like there's a stick or a branch broken here, but that remains to be seen. But uh, anyway, I got a really bad cold, and I'm doing the best I can here. But look at the motion on this. Look at this. Look at that eye shine pops, pops, man, and it goes away. And you can see him. He's right there, that monkey. Like I said, six foot line. It's a seven foot individual. This is a different type than than even homeboy right next to him he's all squeezed in trying to look at me and this guy's pushing right here their heads are butted up against each other this is a brow ridge against this dude's eye and his brow you can see his his cheekbone right here is pressed up against this dude's face right here so you got two of them squeezing in man let me make an adjustment uh, if I can no, I don't think I can no no right there I can probably do it right here, though. Yeah, I think I can get this one. Here we go. Now we can actually get a look at both of them a little bit better. I'm going to let that render. And uh, that's going to be about it for today, guys. Uh, we're going to take one last look at this as it renders. And there it is. You can see this is the guy we reviewed, the gray guy that hopped through. 
and he came to this area, or it could be this one. It's one of these two. Uh, you know, now that I think of it, he this this one is on this side, and, and, and he came from this side. I bet you this is him. This guy was probably right there, but, you know, you saw the video. And, uh, and so there it is, man. Welcome to Crypto Reality. Hell yeah. You can see this thing's face really good right here, man. You know, pushing each other in and out of the way. As I'm sure, uh, you know, probably happens quite a bit with these younger ones. You can see his face really well. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Hopefully without a cold. All right, so uh, we're here in the editor and um, we're taking a look at a young one that uh, that's underneath this portion of salt palmetto is hanging down and it's incredibly hard to see it because it this is kind of like hanging down right in front of his face but this is one eye and this is one eye this guy's about three feet tall this is the bridge of his nose, and yes, it is different colors, but this is the eye area here. Now, I want you to watch this. You can see him, okay? Now, he's he's standing up. I'm just going to back it up just a little bit. You can see his eyes right there. These are his eyes, these little specks. The nose is here. What we're dealing with is essentially um, what appears to be a species that is very at home um, it's 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 almost beyond human comprehension to see a human type being in these primitive living situations and it's very difficult psychologically I think for people to, to fathom this but I need you to watch this It's great. You can see it. I'm going to back it up right there. And um, and you're seeing this child, this hairy little boy that's living in the saw palm meadows. Okay? And uh, and there's some Spanish moss in there. And But, I mean, this kid is covered in hair. And um, he's a little boy. Okay? This thing's 20 feet from me. This is yesterday morning. I mean, look at this. He's sitting there watching me. Now, I've already thrown two or three apples right into this area. Look at the eyes. Look at the eyes. Look at the eyes. Let's back it up. Look at the eyes in this kid, man. You can see he's watching. Look at this. They appear to be going back and forth. I mean, it's, it's insane. You can literally see this guy looking around. It's crazy, man. Right here. You can see him, and his apex is right in there. There's the eyes looking back and forth. Little mouth. This is at one quarter speed of the original film. Keep in mind, the diffusion... There's that eye again. Yeah, man. Let's back that up and take a look at that one eye shot right there. Look at this. Let's do a, let's do a little zoom on that. And let's see how that looks up close. A little bit. A little bit closer. Bed. Let's see. Okay. We're going to go in on a, on a Ken Burns here. And, uh, and we're going to take a look at the eyes that are watching me look at this now let's let that render because it's going to clear up even more but um this is the ipad in 4000 but in the foreground blur because i'm shooting much further back behind this individual and so the the ipad reads uh, in that way, it's 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 like okay, what's the larger picture here? Is basically what the iPad does, and so it, it it's focused, and and takes a shot, and uh, and then shoots video. But there are spots within it that are in the foreground that are that are clear, but yet 
immediately behind it blurred. So you can plainly see this thing's eyes. Look at this eye. Look at this, man. You got the bridge. Um, he's in the salt palmettos. Look at that. Now here he is. It's the uh, it's the color change, right? Now we've got more of a grayish uh, grayish brown with a little green, and now in this one, diffusion, right? A chromatic skin, which tells me this thing has a white or light, very light gray skin underneath whatever this is. It could be hair, it could be his hand, it appears to be a finger, possibly fingers up near the side of its face, covered in hair, uh, could be. You can see what appears to be a fingernail right here. And, uh, and then, you know, another, it's possible this thing's got its hands on both sides of its face, or, you know, I'm not sure. But in the end, you're looking at him and you can see him. This is the little guy that's 20 feet from me. And, uh, and you know, what do you got here? Is that a little chunk of apple? I did throw apples to him, so, hey, that's kind of cool. Um, he did appear at one point in this footage, um, I'm not sure where it was, to uh, to have put something in his mouth, but it, it, it just does, definitely wasn't the resolution that I'd like to be at. But It's still an incredible piece of footage. You're looking at it, here's 20 feet right here. And, uh, and the individual's right there. There he is, man. <clears throat> 20 feet from me. Now, what does this suggest? I mean, you can see him right here as his eyes. That's that, you know, that old classic Bigfoot spy look. I've seen that on t-shirts. It's on Monster Quest. All that stuff. You get the brow ridge and then the eyes and they're looking, you know. Um, incredible, man. Uh, we got some really cool frames coming up here. Uh, you can see pretty much this dude sitting in there. He's got the the apex and there may be some buds with them you know I'm not saying there's not but um, this actually really does look like a little guy with a little bit bigger guy um, right here I'm not sure but uh, it's kind of nuts to tell you the truth looking at that just the fact that this thing is like there watching me man is like crazy look at this next uh, still frame right here that's pretty good there you can see him in and, uh, and moving forward we got where the light starts getting a little bit darker and he looks like you know like a little Chewbacca in there and we got you know kind of the the primate human skunk ape look you know you can see the shape of the head and you've got you know the basic Bigfoot there it is I mean it's pretty cool actually here let me brighten her up a little bit put a little contrast he's like He's got a little squint going on there. <laughs> it's pretty interesting, man. These things are a trip, you know. This whole this whole thing has been look, there it is rendered. Now you can see his eyes opened up a little bit there. It's in, it's incredible. And there's a little dude there, man. And uh, and in this frame, you know, he's we're getting different looks, you know. We're starting to see what kind of nose this guy's got. Um, it's it's really interesting. We move forward and we and we get in between frames where we can see the the eye shifting closed right here. You can see, watch the eye shifting closed and it's sitting inside that little palmetto by me. It's a great frame right there. Let me see what I can do with that one. Oh yeah. See this one right here. You can see that there's a man's face in there. Right here. There's the nostril. It looks like a human nose. Very human-like nose, man. It's got that little bulge above the nostril that'll come down on the side of the mouth. And this is that eye part right there. Uh, that's a great frame, man. This is good stuff for research. We're getting the angle of the head much better like this. And it appears that it's pretty steep, dude. Right? I mean, these bushes could be cutting it off, so it could be a, you know, a little more out here like this. But... Uh, but we've got the hair color on both sides, and we've got the apex, and of course we're seeing that that, that nose there, and the nostril, and, and the eye area. Um, 
we're getting we're getting some eye movement in between these two frames and you can see it yeah you can see it let me see how darken this one up a little bit bring this down let's make an adjustment on the contrast here and we'll bring this up a little bit more and you can see the uh the little the little guy moving in there it's a trip i think there's some other frames coming up here uh, we're looking again right in this area and of course the sun's playing tricks on us right he's in there watching us but the sun is working its magic. Now, these were some really interesting frames here towards the end. If you look right here, you can kind of make out in between the, the sunlight and all that stuff that he's he's still there. There's a perfect shot of his eyes, both eyes looking right at me. Let me see if I can get this a little bit better. And uh, hopefully this will work out because I think this is going to be a real good frame because we're going to be able to make out the fact that he has whites in his eyes in addition to the brown uh, retinas and, 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 the, and the pupil in there. So uh, there's that's rendered now and uh, I'm going to go ahead and put a still frame in it right there and we'll do a zoom and we're going to check this dude out looking at me. Let's let that render for a second. Oh yeah, and that's that. We'll add that last freeze frame in there and give it a little stretch. And uh, and here it is, man. Watch, it's gonna render. Uh, should be right. Nah, there it is. So here's the eyes, right here, and we can see the whites in them on the other side of those pupils. It is. In there we uh, we continue moving on and we get some really interesting human looking you know symmetry coming through and uh, and then we've got some little more primate symmetry frame uh, or two coming up here and uh, of course we're looking at the subject still here uh, it's hard to keep up with I know I'm trying to kind of get here you can see you can see this is what it is right he's in there he's got this <laughs> uh, it's a trip look up here now here he is looking at me so that should tell you uh, and actually you know what I think he's bigger than I thought let's see what these frames grant us yeah I like this frame right here this frame right here <clears throat> shows you uh, some more of that that primate look to it, you know. Um, it's it's a guy kind of, but it's also very primate, you know. And you can see in here. Now, what does that look like? I'm gonna I'm gonna pull up a shot here and show you guys. Um, let me see if I can get this here for you. Okay, here it is. So here's the shot, and uh, and we're comparing this shot here to this in here, and what we're seeing are very, very, very good similarities. We've got uh, we've got the eye area, and we've got the eye area, and, and 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 the symmetry on the sides of it is very similar. We've got that thing going up there. Um, you can see right here is one of the eye sockets and then the mouth is down here. Now he may be getting ready to bite an apple for all I know, but this is similar. Look at this. This was shot in Central Florida as we were pulling unidentified hair clumps off of the oak trees and the craggle that was all around us everywhere. One of our team members heard and saw movement and pointed and I pointed the camera over there and filmed this little thing. And, uh, and these are the, time, the kind of things that are happening in the field, man. And here he is right here, right? So, look. 
this is, you know, this is the this is the shit right here, man. This is one right here, okay? And uh, and I want to thank you for your support here on Patreon, and uh, and uh, we'll see you for the next uh, the next breakdown, which should be soon, right after this next expedition, man. All of these last five breakdowns are from the same expedition. It's been real rewarding, and the data is flowing. So stick around here on Crypto Reality Page. Crypto Reality presents. Looking at a young creature in the trees, and uh, and there's some really good frames of this guy. You can see this is going to be the brow ridge area, and these are the eyes. You can literally see that little pupil in there. But uh, this is going to be the bridge of the nose, and you can see this little head in here. It's a little creature, right? This is one of the creatures we've been studying, a younger one. And look at this. Look at this blinking and stuff going on here, man. You guys seeing that? Yeah, baby, that's what I'm talking about. Little little eye blinker. Some movement going on next to him in those bushes. I think there might be something up there with him. But you can plainly see this thing, man. Here's the right eye. Here's the left eye. He's got some kind of, you know, bush or hair or something. You know, there's trees and stuff. So he's in the trees, and uh, he's probably 30 feet off the ground. Um, you know, if we, uh, if we look at what we're seeing, this could be a... A young Sasquatch. What one of those types that we've been studying looks like when they're a little bit smaller, a little bit younger. There appears to be some extreme genetic variation. Now we've got movement right next to him, so we know there's something else going on. You can see that whatever that is is squirreling around next to him up there by his head there. But um, as we move forward, man, what an unbelievable frame. You can see this, right? And he's got this ear here. And, uh, and, you know, this one actually even resembles, like, kind of feline-ish. You know what I mean? It's crazy, man. Except for this thing is a lot bigger than the cat, guys. But this is crazy, man. That little thing up in that tree, man. Look, something just kind of moves up in there. Somebody pushes his way from behind him forward, and they're trying to take a look. You can see right here, it appears to be like the bridge of a nose. So his head's right in here, and it probably comes up here like this, actually. He's, he's going to have one of their heads. So we're looking at, I think, right here, if you look, you can see. But somebody's trying to push their way in. If you look at the frame before, boom, he kind of, you know, comes out. And then we get what's really the best frame from the capture. And you can plainly see this thing's nose. This is that nose that we keep showing you. It's it's that ape nose. It's flat to the face, and it's got huge nostrils. But they're in more of a side profile as opposed to front facing or angled front facing like a human and in this particular uh nose this soft tissue here appears to have muscle because i've seen them move this thing but back and forth i mean muscle like they have good control over it they can flare these nostrils out and this thing turns into a big ball in the center of their nose in the center of their face rather and then you, the nostrils flare out gigantic this little guy right here is something else um, there is somebody behind him moving around I've established that by looking at the footage 
uh, and it's possible there are other ones that are visible. But for the purposes of this breakdown, you just looked at a young humanoid creature captured on film up in a tree 30 feet off the ground. Back in the editor now, and uh, and we're taking a look at um, this guy right here. He's hiding in the bushes, and um, and and this right here is what I call the runway. 
uh, Melanie and I get into the creek bed by coming this way. And, and yeah, when you review the footage, if you do this kind of thing, you're going to find that there's probably a few other ones around because it's a group we're studying and they reveal themselves all at the same time when we're there shooting. So you're going to see this, right? They're waiting on apples. But what I want to do is I want to get to the point where we're examining this guy here and uh, and what you can see as we move forward is, is absolutely incredible, man. Um, you can see this thing moving, his nose moving, everything, man. Uh, I'm going to play it in slow motion and, uh, and check it out. Watch right here. You're seeing this thing move in here. His mouth just opened. Yeah, he's like moving his mouth open a little bit. This is the, the two eyes. And uh, that's the real-time footage right there. And you can see it. Let's, let's stop that and back it up. Look at this right here, man. You can get a sense for how large he is in this particular situation. And, uh, and you can see a, a picture of me right here. In this same spot and that's me right there so let's let's just look at that let's just take a look at it here's here's me this is the spot we're looking at this guy right here you got the eyes you got the nose you even got a little bit of the mouth and yeah he's it, it, it could be that he has like you know not a pointy head like a you know super pointy head like some of these other Bigfoot we found but there's something going on here, man. Like, this is probably the angle of the shoulders. Like, I really do uh, think that most of these guys have that real high trapezius that attaches, like, real high to the back of the skull. You know what I mean? And there's, like, a muscle group there that's overdeveloped. I mean, I've seen them many times in our footage. You can look here. You can see what looks like fingers over here. And this could be one that's kind of peeking out. If you look, he's kind of, you know, got his head tilted. You can see the eyes. It's the same kind of thing that's going on here. Right, but if you look, let's see how high it is. Right here is about the top of my head, man. Somewhere right in here, and you can see it in this picture. Here I am, right here. We're gonna zoom in, and actually, you know, I'm a little taller than I thought. So here's uh, here's the six foot mark because I'm right there, and uh, here's those bushes that you see in the foreground right here, right? And uh, and so what are we looking at? Well, this is about four feet of bushes. And it's about two feet to the top of my head, right? So let's just take a look at that. This guy is, this is about four feet and then one and two. So this guy is probably somewhere in the neighborhood of, and this is the exact spot, nine and a half to ten feet. We're calling him nine and a half to 10 feet and you can see the comparisons right here's me again four feet five feet roughly six feet uh, maybe a centimeter sh uh, shy of six feet and uh, seven feet eight feet nine feet ten feet puts us right at the the top part of that circle and that would be what where this branch is well when I shot this footage right here I was shooting from a different angle here's the branch over here this is the branch so if I was shooting from that other angle you would see this closer to him it would appear that way he would be more in line with that but I'm not I'm over this way and Scotty's actually over there and I don't think because of this tree that he can see this individual because he's behind this big tree however I did manage to capture him here it is if you look the upper end of that stick is right at his eyes, and the top of his head is at the top of that circle right there. And we see his eyes are at the upper end of that, and the top of his head is at the upper. This is exactly where he is. So here's the top of that individual's head. One, two, three, four feet above me, roughly. So nine and a half, ten feet. One, two, three, four. I'm going to say that thing is between nine and ten feet tall. And that, right there, is a big dude and scary.
very, very scary. Excellent frames, though. Excellent frames. If you watch right here, you can see this guy. Look at that, man. It's nuts. Let's uh, let's let's try to get to the end of this and uh, and see if there are any. Oh, look at that right there. You get the mouth, the nose. You even got the puffy cheeks, man. It's Casper the Friendly Ghost hanging out in the bush. You can see that sun coming through the canopy, hitting from above, lighting him up. What's that color? That's white. That's what. Looks like a white Bigfoot, man. Getting that diffused green forest canopy light cast onto his face. And he goes from white to where the bush, he's in the shadow of the bush. Boom. You get a, to a green tone. That's diffusion on a chromatically colored skin. And that's your Bigfoot right there. Enjoy the rest of the film, guys. Look at that, man. Nostrils. You, you can see what this thing's doing here, man. That's a great frame because you get shadow from the nose. There's the bridge and the shadow under there. Yeah, man. guys welcome to the bigfoot researchers journal today we're taking a look at a great clip that mel and i shot on uh, december 12th and i'm just now getting to breaking this down this was a very large individual up in a tree and yes he's moving around you can see his mouth opening there this is a very big monkey here folks and it's up in a tree 30 feet off the ground and we're going to break it down look at these nostrils man unbelievable look you can see his eyes you can see him looking at us man welcome to the bigfoot researchers journal what's up guys welcome to the bigfoot researchers journal that's a sasquatch up in a tree he's uh bracing himself off of another tree on the right hand side i'm going to show you the footage first the raw footage it's been uh, put in slow motion and some highlights put in with some still frames and then if you stick around, I'm going to break it down frame by frame for you, and we're going to take the best frames and examine this Sasquatch that is indeed 30 feet off the ground with its arm all the way out across, bracing itself, hanging off another tree, watching us as we filmed it.
that. So we're in the editor right now, and uh, we're taking a look at what is sure to be some of our best footage. Um, we got a Bigfoot 30 feet or so off the ground in a tree. Uh, you can see right there, you got the eyes. There's a little ball in there. That's, that's the, uh, the pupil there or the uh, retina. And, um, and as we move on in these frames, you're going to see some really cool stuff. This is his hand. And so what are we looking at here? The figure is like this. It's got the, the triangle head, right? You've got the apex, the brow ridge, the eyes, and then a real big fat nose and some cheeks on the side there. And then it goes down here and there's some stuff in its way. Go figure, right? Probably hair and stuff, but if you look, you're going to see this thing's hand and arm goes across it. It's holding itself up. You can kind of see a little bit of that right there. Um, but as we advance in frames, there's the hand over here on the side. That's just the palm where you can see the skin is showing. Right? And that's all. It's braced against the tree. You can see that arm come out. Now, you're going to see that even better through the footage. Some of the clips are better than others, obviously. You can see this thing's eyes. But, um, but what are we looking at? We're looking at a big... Florida hominoid. Look at that palm over there resting. You can see the curvature coming off the bottom of the wrist right here. Right? This thing is up there bracing itself against a tree. It's nuts. It's nuts, man. Or it looks like it. Anyway, we know it's up there. How it's bracing itself, you can kind of see. It comes off and you got the head that comes down like this. You got the triangle of the head right here, the apex of the head. That, you know, that triangle with no neck. And it just comes right here to the arm. And then it's reaching out across. You can even kind of see what looks like the line of its torso going up to the bottom of the arm right here. This joker is 30 feet off the ground watching us. Now, you can see in this frame here that it's got the nose hole here. And then there's some kind of interference over here. Whether it's Bush or another Bigfoot, we don't know. We know these are the eyes and the forehead. And you can still see the apex up here this way. Um... Is there other things going on? It's possible. You know, as we advance frames, you can see the difference between the frames. And you can also see movement back in there. There's some, somebody with him. Is there a young one hanging off of him? We don't know. We can't see in this video, but we're working on it. Look at that. Look at the change here, man. Look at this. Almost looks like he's got a finger up his nose. You can see the nostrils stretched out like there's an appendage sticking in it. So, Crypto Reality finally gets clear footage, and what is it? Well, guys, uh, it looks like a Bigfoot picking its nose. I don't know if that's what's going on, but it sure does look like it to me. Anyway, uh, moving on from the Bigfoot picking its nose, um, we're going to see some really good frames here. And you guys, you know, you watch the video, but what you can see in some of these is mouse movement. Look at this. You can see right here. This thing is going to open its mouth. And the mouth is is a little bit angled just like the nose. Because they have a lot of soft tissue on the front of their face. And, uh, and eyewitnesses will tell you they can get some pretty strange looks going on their face with the musculature on the front of that, uh, that mug there. So you can get several different looks from the same individual. But you can see him right there. Open that mouth. Rap. Now, he, he's probably mumbling, or maybe he's breathing. I don't know, but look at these frames here, man. Look at this. You can see that little mouth slit right there. Maybe he's got a beard down there. We're not sure, but boy, look at these frames, man. Killer. Now you can see. There he is, 30 feet off the ground, 65 to 70 yards from us. He's up in the same trees they love to be in. You guys know this. I released a video two weeks ago that had a little creature up in this exact same tree, just a little bit lower. They like to be in these particular trees. For three years, we've been recording them up there. It's unbelievable, man. But look at how, look at this. Look at this frame. I mean, come on, dude. Look at this mouth. And then you've got the nose, and you got the two eyes. You can still see that apex up there. Got the old triangle head going on. Casper the friendly Bigfoot. It's an awesome frame, man. Look at this, man. In between, you can see the eyes so good. Oh, there it is. And that's the frame I was looking for. You can really see this guy's entire eye right here. And although, and I will say this, in this frame, this thing appears to have a vertical slit. 
I don't know that it does, but it certainly does appear to. Now, could it be that this thing has, and, and it looks like it does, uh, albino pupils or light sensitive, I'm sorry, not pupils, albino retinas? Are they, are they gray? He could have gray eyes, giving the appearance, especially since it's bright out, that this is vertical when in fact it's, it's just smaller because it's not letting as much light in. I have seen enough of these to know that they have whites in their eyes. And now uh, I, I think we're showing that, you know, you can see that some of these guys may also have gray, gray retinas. And in, in footage from 2015 of a small one, you could see that there was a gray retina. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, anyway, that's a great frame, man. Let's take a look at it. Take a second. Again, we've got the brow area here, and this would be the nose area, and, it, and it's got that nose that I described in the, in the live video. Now, there's something over here interfering with the side of this nose, like he's pressing forward up against something and doesn't mind that it's poking in his face, changing the shape of it. This, to me, suggests that, that these guys understand what's going on when they're hiding. Uh, it, it, everything f that we've shot in the last, I'd say, four years in this creek bed, three and a half years probably, three and a half years in the creek bed, everything points to the fact that they're aware that, that their physical body blends in with the environment. And also that when they mingle and mix with the environment, that is, putting their faces all pushed up against trees and leaves, that it has a greater effect of camouflaging them. Our footage points to that, that they're very aware that they blend in with the environment. Again, subjects right here. You can see, look at the, the bottom of this nose right here, perfect outline. You got the, uh, the old Barney Miller going on there, right? Uh, interesting, man. Some really good frames in there. You can, uh, you can also see some movement down in this area. What this is, we don't know yet. Uh, could just be a bunch of hair and an arm swinging. I don't know. But uh, in looking at our buddy, and he's over here, and you can see that arm, there's something here, okay? If he's hanging off of this tree, it stands to reason that if his head is here, and you can see it, then... The shoulder could push across, and this does appear to not have hair on it, whatever it is. So, in looking at it, I'd, I'd say, and it even is is changing positions in this fr in this frame right here. Watch this right here. Watch. You can see it changing. Just a little. Is it pushing up against it? It looks like it. But the frames in this are unbelievable, man. Look at this. Look at that Bigfoot, man. Wow. It's another really great frame right there. Uh, showing him in a little bit different angle, staring at me. And Melanie, another great frame. You can see the guy's eyes. Again, he's right here. And, uh, and you can see the eye area here coming off. And this would be right in between the eyes where the bridge of the nose is. You can see the eye and the perfect shape of an eye right there. And then the bridge of this really wide, what is it? Spade-shaped nose with holes on the side on an angle, exactly the way I described it in the live video. If you go look at the live video, the Bigfoot chat video, uh, Q&A, that is just before this. Look at that frame. Wow. Now we can kind of see what's going on here. And it looks like there might be a little guy with him. You never know. They do actually... Uh, have family groups and it appears based on what we've seen that different individuals will be with these young so maybe that's a young one that just jumped on pops back and they climbed up or maybe this is a female I'm inclined to think that this is a male but if there is a little one with him and of course we can't make that out definitively but uh, in the end uh, you know look at this frame man look at this creature up here this thing's huge now you can really see the arm in that, in that palm up on that tree. Now, it might even be holding it in the fingers on this side. You never know. Boy, look at those frames, man. Look at that. Now, you get that retina right there. That's that nocturnal uh, 
putting a lot of a lot of light forward, a lot of light, refracting a lot of light off the back of that eye, big time. Nocturnal evidence of the nocturnal thing galore in our footage. And that's a great frame right there. You can see the monkey man 30 feet off the ground in the bushes. Uh, here's a probably one of the better frames. I really like this frame because it shows the pursed lips of the creature. And then there is something here, whether it's sticks, leaves, I'm not sure, but he's behind something here. But you can definitely make this creature out. You can see the side of the head here. It goes up into that apex. Uh, we've got some kind of reddish coloring going on here. Not sure what that is. Probably a little aberration, I'm sure. But uh, there he is, man. 30 feet off the ground. Look at that. Wow. Uh, as we move forward, we've got all kinds of stuff moving here. Is there one hanging off of it? Is that what this is? An arm coming up? I don't know. Is it down here hanging off of the chest of this creature? There's definitely something moving down there. As you guys go back and review the footage, uh, let me know what you think, man. Tell me what you find. You're definitely going to find more frames of this Bigfoot. I, I left a lot of stuff out. This right here, I think, is one of the better frames. This is an ape man. You can see the head. You can see the line of the head. It goes up perfectly to a point. You can see the line of the head here. You can see that hair and the hair lines of the hair. You can see this face perfectly. It's up in that tree, guys. It's up in that tree. And, uh, and that's, that's a crazy frame, man. If we back that up, to this side I can turn that spot off uh, it's gonna have to render so I'm just gonna leave it the way it is but in the end uh, there it is you got that frame now you can see there still is this solid thing coming off of this this right angle like there's an arm and a torso arm and then a straight line for the torso you can see the head goes up it's in line where it should be we don't see the rest of it we don't know I mean, this could be his damn leg for all we know, and he's got his foot on the side of the tree, this being the foot on the other side of that tree. He could be up and his leg going this way, and then his foot's on the side of this tree. We can see what is obvious in this uh, as a couple of different things going on here that, uh, that you know we're wishing we could explain better, obviously, with clearer footage. I did get news today that we are going to be upgrading technology uh, immediately, and, uh, and so... I would look for even clearer footage from us. Look at the eyes on that creature, man. It's nuts. Look at this eye. God, it's scary, man. You can see him real good. There's a real good shot of the eye shine and the eye actually opening and closing. You can see that right there. This is going to be that nocturnal retina I was talking about with, uh, with the light absorption of like, you know, probably like a fish, I'm sure. You know, or, you know, comparing comparatively... Snook, a species that I fish for regularly down here in South Florida, have 10 times the light absorption uh, as a human being. I, it wouldn't surprise me if it was damn near the same case with these guys. They see really good at night. Look at that eye. You can see it popping up in frames from here to there, you know, shining here and there. and It's nuts, man. Wow, both eyes. You can stare right at it, both nostrils. You got the, the mouth area here. You're looking at it, right? And it looks like, yes, there may be something beside it. Uh, maybe pushing in. You never know. Excellent frames, though. I mean, look at this thing's face, man. Look at those eyes in it. You can see the brows on this thing, you know? It's amazing. Great frames. Lots of movement. Lots of eye movement. Just movement galore, you know? On this uh, this footage, it's nuts. Look at this. Look at this thing, man. I mean, we got some good frames of him. This breakdown has uh, has been brought to you by seven years of hell in the bush. Okay, there's no doubt about that. From this point forward, whatever they tell you about crypto crypto reality, you remember one thing. We are filming real Bigfoot, and there's no doubt about it. You can see these creatures in our film. We've described it. We've shown you till we're blue in the face. Look at the movement going on in this thing's face. It's crazy, guys. Here's a Sasquatch. I would expect even clearer footage since we're getting ready to upgrade to, to equipment that's two 
to four times the resolution we get now. What are we going to do with that? What do you guys think? What do you think we're going to do with that foot, with that, uh, that equipment? That's right. We're going to end this debate once and for all. We're going to end this debate once and for all. Look at this monkey up in this bush, man. This is nuts. It is nuts. Roll it back to the beginning. And, uh, and some of those better shots that we had, here he is, man. Can even see what it looks to be a little ear on the side here. But this thing is perfect Bigfoot. Look at that. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time on the Bigfoot Researcher's Journal. You know how for decades, everybody who's seen a Bigfoot is put down? Everybody who says they're real from experience has been laughed at. You know how many people have said that what we do isn't real? Guess what? The truth is coming for all of you.